On Church and State, you discuss a lot of uh, current uh, political events in Australia. We've already discussed a lot uh, about the uh, marriage debate, which has been going on for the, the past uh, few months, and obviously you have uh, strong opinions on. But also another prominent uh, issue at the moment is that of uh, free speech. And, and of course, it's uh, the, the law that's most prominent is 18C of the, the Racial Discrimination Act, which makes it illegal to offend, offend and insult somebody on the, the mm. basis of race. But there are also other threats to free speech, such as the various uh, anti-discrimination laws that are prevalent both at the Commonwealth and state level. And Look, uh, free speech is a huge thing, and there's nothing the left hate more than, than free speech. Uh, the amount of conditions that they want to put on free speech... Um, makes it impossible to continue to use the word free. Uh, and and it's terribly intellectually dishonest for them to say they want a debate and then to limit the terms of that debate to exclude disagreement of any sort. Uh, and, and that's essentially what they're doing. So 18C, you're not allowed to offend someone's feelings. I mean, what a ridiculously low bar. Uh, it's just, it's patently absurd. Um, but, you know, all the anti-discrimination tribunals and Human Rights Commission that we have are inherently about reducing and limiting and putting conditions upon our rights of political expression. And it's an implied constitutional right, but it seems to be inherently worthless because time and time again, we're seeing this march by the left through the institutions continually eroding the freedoms we've got. You've got Bernard Gaynor, who's kicked out of the army because he objected to the army breaking the army's rules about religious vilification, about participating in political demonstrations. And, you know, the High Court didn't think it was worth hearing his ultimate complaint that the army was marching in a public protest against the status quo, against the laws in the land, like in uniform, under orders. Now, if he can't say that, what can you say? So you, you have the Archbishop in Tasmania, who was hauled through a painful process, the outcome of which doesn't matter because the process was the punishment. Now, ultimately, the complainant dropped his complaint and he, you know, went away because he knew it was bad PR for the marriage campaign. And it was because it's terrible. But the, you know, we've got uh, Kathy Club, who's basically been charged by the court, found guilty of political expression. She was outside an abortion clinic offering people help. She wasn't abusing them or harassing them or insulting them. She was concerned for them and and she was offering them help and alternatives because if you don't know the abortion industry, there is no choice. There's one choice when you go into those things. But whether you agree or disagree is the point. You're not allowed to disagree. And and so we've We've now got this exclusion zone where you're not allowed to express your opinion in this space. There's no physical harm to people. And ultimately, that should be the test of what freedom you're allowed, is what physical harm do you do to somebody? Making them cry, hurting their feelings, you know, grow up. This is some kind of first world Western democracy indulgence where we like killing ourselves, killing our babies and crying about our feelings. These things that don't happen in the rest of the world, in developing countries where they have to fight for survival every day. Nobody's fighting for the right to kill themselves or their children. Nobody's fighting for the right to silence and censor somebody else because their their feelings got hurt. Like, you get on with life. If somebody hurt your feelings, you, you move away. You, you find a different friend. You You fight back. You participate in the conversation like a grown-up. And if somebody's going to be – like the, these things happen. Robust – what we have to lose by not having robust conversations is far, far greater than the damage to our feelings when somebody says something racist. Um, you know, we shouldn't be allowed to incite people to violence. We shouldn't be able to commit violence. We shouldn't be able to touch other people's property, what belongs to them. But other than that – Personal freedom is is a sacred human right. Uh, protecting your feelings isn't. Now, and that that's ultimately where this comes down to. We can't even debate proper policy. We saw it's just so many examples already in Australia, and it's um, it, it's something that 
everybody needs to get upset about it because it's it's threatening the fabric of democracy itself to not be able to say what you're thinking and if if you can't say what you're thinking you're actually having your beliefs mandated by the government and that's far too much power for the government to have everything should be open to criticism robust scathing immature criticism because because that conversation is in fact the solution and that's how we got where we are it wasn't by limiting conversations it was by having really really severe debates and since magna carta it's it's been all about limiting the role of government limiting the role and power of those at the top and giving more and more power to the people and if we can't even say controversial things because offending people is hurtful we've got this muting um, dumbing down of thinkers in Australia. And Winston Churchill, uh, in, in all Western democracy, Winston Churchill said it best, the worst thing about democracy is the intelligence of the average voter. But if you're not allowed to get smarter, if you're not allowed to debate, if you're not allowed to reason and argue amongst ourselves, I don't see the intelligence level rising, which is why you and I do our shows, so that we can hopefully promote some intelligent conversation. Uh, the problem with uh, hate speech laws, which the average person, uh, you know, hears and say, oh, well, you know, we don't want a hateful, uh, you know, language said, is that the, these laws are always used by the uh, most easily offended, which was you know, uh, easily on display with the, the Queensland University of Technology 18C case, which, and as you, as you mentioned, uh, right. a person who is easily offended can pretty much, you know, put people through this, you know, traumatic you know, legal process, which even if they, you know, un, uh, at mm. the end of it, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, judge, you know, doesn't declare them, you know, like racist or, or you're a homophobe, like the, 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 the process, mm. you know, uh, bogs you down. And then there's also the media, you know, scrutiny where the, the process know, the, is the punishment. And, and, and so you, if, even though it's, you know, obviously we, you know, would all like to live in a society where we're pol polite to each other and that we've all got, you know, different views and interpretations of, of things and it's, it's not good for, you know, discussion to, you know, be able to, you know, be uh, open, uh, you know, speak our minds if there's, there's always somebody who wants to, you know, run off to some tribunal and say, you know, uh, I'm offended, you know, pl please, you know, stop this mean person. Mm. Yeah, look, there is no such thing as hate speech. It just isn't. It was a word and a phrase invented uh, at some United Nations meeting a few decades ago, maybe in the 50s, by Russian communist dictators who were seeking a globally endorsed tool for silencing critics of the government. I mean, there was no such thing as hate speech before then. Speech is speech. And you don't, you don't get to censor somebody's perspectives and worldview and feelings. Hate speech is just a way of silencing criticism of, of the establishment of the elite. And that's why you see these uh, these lobbyists and these activists weaponizing these laws against the majority of citizens with very pedestrian traditional views such as the sanctity of marriage and the normalcy of heterosexual relationships and in turn they invent um, epithets and pejorative language like heteronormative uh, like sh that should be redundant of course hetero is normal that's the way human population has perpetuated for a few thousand years. That's very normal. Political correctness, uh, I think it was Chairman Mao who first invented that term because, you know, there's this, there's this well-packaged propaganda that, you know, Chinese use this, um, this concept of a harmonious society, which basically means everybody doing what the government wants. Now, it's really well packaged, but you know, people that that buy into that lie and and that myth, such as hate speech and political correctness and harmonious society, you know, it, it sounds like you should be um, fighting for those things, but you have to understand the agenda behind them. And when they're reducing and eliminating and putting conditions on freedom, you have to stand against it with everything you've got. And and uh, yeah, be more discerning of, of what's going on behind the motives and, and agendas with the things that are being thrust upon us by mainstream media and political elites.
This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.